Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the Chaos Vibration, a channel dedicated towards the practice of chaos magic, manifestation, spirituality, and philosophy. My name is Damian James, self-transformation shaman, chaos magic practitioner. In today's video, we're going to be getting philosophical. Not just for the sake of yapping either. Um, I'm eager to see if we can get a conversation started here, if people want to drop comments. I'm eager to see what people think about this philosophy on the law of attraction, as well as give people different vantage points, different views as to how they can use the law of attraction in their own lives, in their spiritual growth, and or their magical practices to empower themselves. I am not telling people what to think here. So as always, especially today, question me, question everything, hit the bell and subscribe notifications for more in the future. And I just want to take one quick second to thank all the new subscribers and followers that have been popping up on this channel lately. I really appreciate it. Anyway, what is this question? The question we're going to be tackling is this. Is the law of attraction theoretically, emphasis on theoretically, best used as a manifestation or spiritual system? Or is it best used as a ma magic or occult principle? Here are examples. Examples of systems would be as follows. Christianity obviously has several different systems. Protestant, Methodist, Lutheran, or otherwise. These things are systems. Buddhism is a spiritual system. Hinduism is a spiritual system. Sympathetic magic, goetic magic, Wiccan. These things are magical systems. Or is it a principle? Here are examples of principles. A Christian principle would be any of the Ten Commandments. Um, chaos magic, obviously, is a meta-system of six principles that are open to interpretation and how the user uses them, such as gnosis, technical excellence, diverse approaches, so on and so forth. You guys probably know this by now. Is the law of attraction one of those, or is it a system? Or is it best used as a system, if it even is? This is what we're going to be talking about, and let's jump right to it. First off, and I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, I do use the law of attraction as a principle, but as far as a system goes, I don't really think the law of attraction is a spiritual manifestation or magic system. And here is why. A lot like chaos magic, it pretty much is a meta system. And here's what I mean. It draws from a lot of other established systems just as chaos magic does. For example, it takes elements of quantum mechanics, it takes elements of positive psychology, it takes a lot of elements of spirituality. Acceptance, not lusting for a result or a desire, so on and so forth. But it's really not any of those one singular things on its own right. It's why it's open to interpretation. Some people I know practice law of attraction and they have no interest in the spiritual awakening, and that's their choice. That's absolutely fine in my eyes. But it's just not established. It's not so easily defined or tangibly defined. It's not as objective as a religion. And it's not a religion either. So there, I would say, it isn't really a system. The user is free to pick energetic models, psychological models, and focus on those a lot like chaos magic. In fact, that's why I personally believe it is either a manifestation of the chaos magic framework and or meta system, or the other way you could look at it is it could be the cousin, or you could say that there is a yin-yang relationship between law of attraction and chaos magic. They go very well hand in hand. That's my experience from using Law of Attraction for several years of my life, and I've been practicing Chaos Magic for a couple now. Now, the only other thing I want to debunk here, as far as the Law of Attraction being its own system, is this. And it's all about universal laws. 
Personally, I do not see universal laws as systems either. They're kind of metaphysical philosophies. I know philosophy gets a very pigeonholed, dirty word, and that's all we're going to say about that right now, but these are essentially metaphysical or esoteric philosophies. If you believe in universal laws, that's fine. I have mixed feelings about everything, but anyway. Even if one does, there's a lot of speculation within the Law of Attraction community as to whether or not the Law of Attraction is a primary law, or as Aristotle might put it, a primary or first principle. In other words, thoughts create reality, therefore every other law is only a manifestation of the Law of Attraction, or if it is in fact a secondary law, which is generally what somebody like Bob Proctor believes when he says that the Law of Attraction is actually a secondary function of the Law of Vibration. So, it's not really concrete there, and the, those are more reasons. It's a meta-system, and also drawing from universal philosophies that have multiple laws operating in tandem, and it's pretty much extrapolating that singular idea. And there's only one other thing here I want to get philosophical about, about why I personally feel the Law of Attraction is a meta-system, a mix-and-match of things, and not its own established system. And it's all about universal laws. The way I see it, universal laws are not systems either. They're metaphysical or esoteric philosophies. I know philosophy gets a very pigeonhole dirty word in today's society, but that's its own matter. Anyway, they're pretty much philosophies or truths that certain people agree to. Even if you do believe in universal laws, and that's absolutely fine with me, it gets problematic because there's multiple universal laws working in conjunction with one another, and the Law of Attraction seeks to isolate it from all its other elements here. It, it would be like taking one element from a periodic table and saying, this is the core element. That's obviously not going to work. Also, even if you believe in universal laws or just the Law of Attraction, there's a lot of debate within its own community about whether it is a primary universal law or a secondary one. For example, some may say that because everything starts as a thought, all other universal laws are byproducts of the Law of Attraction, where somebody like Bob Proctor says the antithesis, and he says that the Law of Attraction is actually a secondary function of the Law of Vibration. Now, here's the other thing I want to touch on. Is it best used as a system for life, spiritual development, and or magic or occultism? It can be used that way. Um, occultist William Walker Atkinson certainly suggested so, but I think it gets a little problematic, and it's not the Law of Attraction itself, if you believe in it. It's the way it's been taught. It's obviously all about positive thinking, right? It's pretty much that one principle. And once again, one principle doesn't make up a system. But anyway, this gets problematic because negative perception, negative experiences, they are part of life. And I'm not saying think negative. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what it does is it pretty much turns the positive and everything that's good into, it equates it to something like God. And anything that's negative, there's this almost implication that is the devil. For example, in the book The Secret, it says if you have a negative thought, warning, 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 countdown to negative manifestation or something. What this does is it, if we're not conscious, it sets up internal resistance at even sub and unconscious levels. If we have a bad day, it exasperates the negative feedback loop in our lives. Here's a good example. I know this is a touchy subject. Um... The COVID crisis. Obviously, it was scary for everyone, and we had real important things to worry about, whether it was your job, your loved ones, whatever your case may be. Somewhere, whether you were conscious of it or not, in the back of your mind, if you practice it as a state of living, a state of being, part of your mind was doing that warning, 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 red alert, worrying about manifestations which would just cause extra stress, extra anxiety, and if you practice that as a soul system, 
that's obviously only going to make matters worse. So now let's talk about why the law of attraction, the way I see it, is actually best used as an occult or manifestation principle as opposed to a system. I actually use it as a seventh principle in my chaos magic practice. It's all about positivity. I think positivity is more about an I can do mentality than that, that, that which feels good, but let's focus on the feeling here. Obviously, when we're doing manifestation work or magic work, we want to feel good about the work we're doing, right? We want to feel the potentiality of our work. We want to feel positive about the ability to manifest our result. Duh. One of the easiest ways to do that is to feel good about whatever system or God forms, higher powers you're working with. So here's an example. Let's say that you practice law of attraction and you were a Christian your whole life and you firmly believe that the Christian God is the one true God and that's absolutely your choice. I'm not here to say there's anything right or wrong with that. But you feel like you have to start working with the universe or maybe some quantum mechanics here. There's probably, once again, some subconscious and unconscious resistance because you have competing beliefs. You want said manifestation, but wanting to be a good Christian probably out-prioritizes that. For myriads of reasons, one of which being you practice that belief your whole life. Using the law of attraction as a manifestation principle allows you to hack that problem here. Essentially, you can place your manifestations with God instead of the universe. I know that's a very simple example, but it should be pretty straightforward as to what I'm trying to convey. An example from my own life is I have very mixed feelings about the vibrational scale stuff. I see the point. I like some of the ideas, but in absolution, I find it to be a little too hippy-dippy, at least, for me. So trying to practice that didn't feel good to me. It only ramped up resistance. Now, also with magic, We've been talking a lot about the importance of trance, gnosis, altered states of consciousness on this channel. To do these things, you need to relax. It's kind of hard to relax when there's something you don't feel good about, right? For example, yes, most, most practices suggest there are seven chakras. We all know this story. But some believe there's six. Some believe there's eight. Some believe that the root goes by the feet. Some believe it's under the tailbone. If you've ever gone through this experience, isn't it kind of hard to relax when you've been told 16 different things, you want to do it right, and you're going, am I doing this right? That's not going to help you relax. That's going to keep you in the conceptual state of mind and not get into those trance states where manifestation actually happens. So if you said, hey, I can find my root chakra at my feet. I work with six, and that feels good to me. That's what I believe. That's what's going to manifest in your perception. That's what's going to manifest in your reality. So you want to work with what feels good here. We will be talking about servitors, invocation a little bit on this channel soon. Chaos Magic believes that you can work with Batman, Superman, or something instead of a god form if you want to. I know that sounds crazy, but the point there is if that feels good to you, it has a much better chance of working because your own subconscious, your own consciousness will be receptive to it. It simply is receptive to that which feels good, good to it. Now in closing, you don't have to decide, oh, it's a system or it's a principle for the rest of your life and commit, at least in chaos magic. That's not what it's about at all. But anyway, should you choose to use it as a principle and wonder how that works, I want to let you in on a little secret that the Law of Attraction doesn't talk about much, that magic does, and it's a practice or a trick known as banishing. And here's what that means, because I know it sounds negative. After we do our manifestation work, let's say we're writing our affirmations or doing our visualization, we want to banish the work into our unconscious mind, or the universe, if that's what you believe. How you do that is up to you. I like to keep it simple, splash some cold water on my face when I'm done. Some people like to make a banishing statement like, it is my will to banish my manifestations into the universe. 
In new age terms, I think that pretty much means let go. So look at it as if you had the manifestation in your hand, you're dropping it into the vortex for it to be sucked up and returned to you in physical form. I think that's a little, more, a little bit more advantageous because once again, when we practice law of attraction as a lifelong belief system, it would be like if I said, hey look, here is your manifestation in the form of a magic lamp, like from Aladdin, and there's a genie in it. If you can keep this thing in good condition for 30 days, you will get your manifestation. There's this tendency, and I don't think it's because of the viewer, I think it was explained misleadingly, but there's this tendency to try and carry the magic lamp with you everywhere you go when you practice law of attraction as a total belief or manifestation system. Would you bring a magic lamp with you to work? Would you bring it with you on the highway, on bumpy roads? What if it breaks? You break your manifestation. So if you're going to take one thing from this video, one thing of considering it, considering it could be a principle, when you're done with your work, when you feel good, let go of it, banish it to the universe, and let the results return to you when the time is right. That concludes this video. I'm eager to see what people think. This is a pretty broad topic, actually. I'm sure I, I miss some views, some outlooks, so if somebody has something else to add, I'm very eager to hear it. Should you choose to use it as a principle or have questions on how, drop a comment, and I wish you luck with that. When I started doing that, honoring my truth, manifestation got a lot easier because I was being in touch with myself as opposed to somebody else. But that concludes this video. Have a great next couple of weeks, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Eudaimonia. Hey guys, thank you for checking out today's video and an even bigger thank you for making it through to the end. I really hope you enjoyed it and I truly appreciate your time. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more releases in the future relating to all things metaphysics.